One of the other things that we have learned, and this is critical, is experience matters. Nothing matters more when you go into treatment than the actual experience of the people who are going to be treating you. Michael DeBakey was the greatest heart surgeon in history to this date, but he was not a great general surgeon. He hadn't done any of that since his residency, really. He was the wrong choice. And study after study shows that the, the experienced physicians give you the best outcome. So what do you want to do when you go to the doctor? I'm going to, most people are going to go to the doctor. I know that there are many holistic and, and, and dietary ways of treating various conditions. But eventually, most people in America are going to go to the doctor. Indeed, the average American has nine surgeries over the course of a lifetime. That's, that's a, a, the most serious medical intervention. You want to know exactly how many of these procedures the doctor has done. He or she must tell you the answer. If he or she doesn't and has a bad outcome, that's more grounds for a lawsuit, not perhaps on uh, uh, medical malpractice, but in terms of informed consent. Okay, you wanna know how many procedures he's done, you wanna know his infection rate, and you wanna know his outcomes. Now, there was a, there's a very famous case the ca in Colorado, uh, the case of Michael Skolnick. Michael Skolnick was a big young man, large, I think he was about 6'5 or 6'6, six, six, a strapping guy, and he was um, uh, taking an antidepressant called Welbutrin for smoking control. I don't know who prescribed it, but I guess they do that occasionally. Well, he had a, a bad result on that. He had a seizure. So he had a seizure and he went to a neurosurgeon in Colorado. The neurosurgeon prescribed a CT scan. The CT scan that appeared to show a speck on the top of the brain. The surgeon said, the neurosurgeon said, oh, I can get that out. That's not even uh, 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 digging into the brain. It's just on the surface. I've done it before successfully. Okay. Well, there's a real question today about whether there actually was a speck on Michael Skolnick's brain. Uh, maybe there was an artifact on the CT. We don't, we don't really know. But the surgeon did the um, procedure and uh, Michael Skolnick uh, uh, lost a great deal of his intellectual capacity, a great deal of his vision. Uh, uh, he became like a, a kid in the primary grades, he gained 100 pounds, was profoundly depressed, and ultimately died. But again, he had a great-hearted mother named Patty Skolnick, and she organized people in Colorado to pass the Michael Skolnick Medical Transparency Act. Now, one of the things about this surgeon was that he had lost his license in a couple of states. He, he's one of these medical vagabonds, gets in trouble in Kansas, moves to Colorado. And there have been a number of these cases. Well, the, the Michael Skolnick Medical Transparency Act, which has been copied in about 20 states, uh, showed that, uh, uh, will we'll show you how many malpractice cases a doctor has had, if there are any verdicts against him or her, uh, if there's been any trouble with 
his license in any state and or with regard to prescribing with the DEA, Drug Enforcement uh, Agency. So that's a good thing. Unfortunately, it doesn't specifically address experience, and no law uh, uh, does. It's, it's a flaw in the law, if you will. So you really have to ask yourself. Anecdotally, experientially, I think most doctors will tell you the truth and allow you to uh, be a prudent medical consumer. Again, the reason is if something goes wrong, then perhaps your uh, 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 consent was not informed. Um, these cases, the famous and the average, really changed our attitudes uh, about, about uh, uh, and our ex own experiences uh, changed our attitudes about medical care. In 1997, the National Patient Safety Foundation of the AMA had a poll where 42% of people said that either they or a friend or a relative had been the victim of a medical error. Um, I don't think my personal experience was so exceptional. Uh, a medical error was defined as a preventable adverse event leading to uh, death or serious, uh, in serious bodily injury. In 2006, only 13% of Americans in a Harris interactive poll agreed with the statement, on the whole, the healthcare system works pretty well. 2006, only 13% of us uh, uh, um, believed that the, that the um, healthcare system works pretty well. We were obviously becoming dissatisfied. 82% uh, of us wanted all hospital medical errors to be available to the public. Well, they're not, but that's what we want. Uh, and in the internet era, two thirds of us now uh, do research on the diagnoses that we receive from our providers, which is in large measure a good thing. Now, sometimes medical research is obviously complicated and sometimes people, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, get a, uh, uh, maybe a, a partial result from their research that is not helpful. So really, you have to, uh, it's fine to do research. I would also do it in conjunction with somebody uh, who maybe you have a friend who's a doctor, nurse, uh, maybe retired, uh, do it in conjunction with somebody who, who understands medicine. I can't say that I do. I've done all of this research, and I was fortunate uh, to have, uh, uh, and I acknowledge them in my book, a gamut of, of doctors and nurses who I could call up and say, hey, what does this mean? Is this significant? Am I... Uh, going down the wrong path here, and sometimes I was.